Welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about the strength of an acid or a base. So I'm starting out with an example here. Which acid would you think is stronger just looking at the formulas? Hydrobromic, HBr, or carbonic, H2CO3? Well, we just talked about monoprotic and polyprotic acids. So when I look at this, I see that hydrobromic only has one hydrogen to lose, but carbonic has two hydrogen to lose. So it seems like H2CO3 should be twice as strong, but it's not. Hydrobromic acid is actually a strong acid, and carbonic is actually a weak acid. So even though carbonic acid does have two hydrogen that it can give up, it doesn't give up either hydrogen easily in water. HBr only has one hydrogen, but it easily gives up that hydrogen in water. So strength of acid and base all about how easily the H plus gets pulled off. How much H plus will fall off or dissociate or ionize in water. So you should be familiar with the word dissociate or ionize. When somebody disses you, they distance themselves. Dissociate is the opposite of associate. Ionize is also used because you form ions when it dissolves in water. You break apart these ionic substances. So acid or base strength is all about how much H plus falls off. So if we look at these two, HBr is shown with a single arrow to show it, it undergoes a complete reaction. It completely dissociates. So when you got done, you would have water in here. You would have H plus. You would have Br minus in your container. But what you wouldn't have is any HBr. It would all be fallen apart. I didn't do a very good job on that, so let me try that again. There would be no HBr in there because it's totally dissociated. But with carbonic acid, we use a reversible arrow to show that only some of the H2CO3 breaks down into HCO3- minus and H+. Plus. And you notice only one um, hydrogen is shown coming off. The other hydrogen could come off, but that would be a separate process. So those are two separate reactions, and then I'd form 2 minus plus my second H plus. But this is a two-step process for this to happen, and both of them um, are reversible processes or reactions. Okay, it only partially dissociates in water, so that even though I've got two of them to come off eventually, there'll be far less of these, and up here there'll be far more because the HBr completely falls apart. So when I look at my container, I would have HCO3 minus, I would have H plus, I would still have a lot of H2CO3, and I'd have water in there. And then eventually, I'd even have some CO3 2 minus in there as well. So that's the difference between strong and weak, is how much it dissociates or ionizes. So how do you know? Well, the number of hydrogen atoms in a formula doesn't tell you. So it's something else that determines the strength of an acid. What matters is the number of hydrogen atoms that actually dissociate or get pulled off. And remember, it's water that's going to be doing the separating. So it depends on the strength of the bond, which is going to depend on the polarity and intermolecular forces. So hydrogen bonds will more likely get pulled apart by water, or at least dipole-dipole. It'll also depend on bond length. Um, Single bonds are easier to break than double or triple bonds. And it also depends on the number of covalent bonds in the compound. What's the shape look like? How easily can water get into the hydrogen it's trying to pull off? So a number of factors will determine the bond strength. But basically, the weaker the bond with H+, plus, or with the hydrogen that you're trying to remove, the stronger the acid. Because a stronger bond... And then a stronger bond means a weaker acid, which I know seems backwards, but strong acids fall apart or dissociate completely, so the bond holding the hydrogen must be weak and easily broken. Whereas a weak acid doesn't give up many hydrogen, so it must be holding on strongly to its hydrogen. And you, think, you can think of bond strength like breaking a stick. The length makes it easier or harder to break, with single bonds being easier being longer. The thickness... So that could be if it's polar or nonpolar, and even the kind of wood. So what substance is it? What's its shape? How easily can you get to the hydrogen ions? Those things all affect the energy needed to break it. So what do you need to know about strong and weak acids, or bases for that matter? Well, you should be able to tell when you look at the dissociation equation if it's strong or weak. HBr completely dissociates, so it's a strong acid. 
So we use a single arrow to show it's a complete reaction. So I would look at this and go, that's a strong acid. Whereas H2CO3 only partially dissociates, so we use the reversible arrow showing the reaction is reversible, and I would conclude this is a weak acid. So how do you decide, if you have two acids and you have each a solution of each one, how do you decide which one is stronger? Well, first of all, you have to have equal concentration of each one because concentration is different than strong and weak acid. Strong and weak acid is about how much H plus they give off. But if you have enough weak acid concentrated in one area, it can be fairly concentrated and still do a lot of damage. So if you have equal molarities of two acids, and you want to know which one's the stronger acid, you want to come up with a test or property that measures how many ions or H plus ions are in the solution. The more H plus ions, the stronger the acid. So often we use a test to compare two acids and determine which is stronger and which is weaker. Now one of these tests, a pH meter or pH paper, will actually give you a number, give you a quantitative number. Otherwise, conductivity and the reaction with the metal or base just tells you which one's stronger and which one's weaker, what we call qualitative. In all three tests, the stronger acid is going to be the one that releases more hydrogen ions in the solution. So for the three tests, I would expect the stronger acid to have a lower pH. Strong acids tend to be 1 to 3, whereas weak tend to be around 4 to 6. Remember, this is the one test that actually gives you a number. I would expect the strong acid to be the better conductor, so that means you'll have a brighter bulb or more uh, lights light up. It will react more quickly with metal to produce more gas in less time because um, acids with any metal always produce H2, is the gas that's being produced. And it'll react more quickly with the base in what we call a neutralization reaction, which is always exothermic, so we'll see a, a temperature change more quickly with the strong acid. So basically what happens is the stronger acid will be bigger and faster in any of these tests. So how about bases? Well, bases are also considered strong if they completely dissociate in water and weak if they only partially dissociate in water. So again, we can use a single or double arrow to show if the reaction or dissociation is complete or reversible. And we can use very similar tests to compare a strong and weak base. A strong base will have a higher pH, like 12 to 14 for a strong base, and we'll expect something more like 8 to 11 for a weak base. It'll be the better conductor, and it'll react more quickly with an acid, so the temperature change will be more quickly. It doesn't react at the base, however. And the last thing to mention um, sets us up for part B of section 18.2, and that's the idea of acid-base strength and equilibrium. Weak acids and bases are reversible reactions, so really there's an equilibrium constant that can be calculated. Strong acids and bases, however, won't have an equilibrium constant since it's assumed that the dissociation is complete and your reactants are zero when you get done, so you can't set up an equation with zero on the bottom and calculate a value for that. So what does a dissociation tell us, or the KEQ for acids and bases? A smaller KEQ means less dissociation and a weaker acid or base, just like it did in Chapter 17. The smaller KEQ, the further from one it gets, 0 .000 whatever, the less it dissociates, the more reactant that's less left, and less product that forms.